Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Five most foolish decisions made by famous people in history. Number five, Decca Records failing to sign the Beatles. In 1962, Dick Rowe, an executive at Decca Records, thought guitar groups were falling out of favor. On New Year's Day that year, the Beatles, though at the time Pete Best was their drummer and they called themselves the Silver Beatles, auditioned for Decca Records producer Tony Meehan. One month later, when Dick Rowe heard their audition tape, which contained 15 tracks on a 12-inch audio tape, he passed on signing the band. This proved to be a foolish decision on his behalf, as the Beatles went on to make $38.5 million by the end of the summer of 1967, after signing with EMI. Number 4. Napoleon Invading Russia In 1812, Napoleon invaded Russia with about 600,000 men and over 50,000 horses. His plan was to bring the war to an inclusion within 20 days by forcing Russians to fight a major battle. The reality, however, was a bit different. Napoleon found out that Russia had a very poor road network at the time. Thus, he was forced to advance along a very narrow front, which ended up wasting most of his food resources. As a result, the soldiers were weakened by their poor diets and fatigue, therefore making them susceptible to disease. Typhus was rampant amongst the troops due to the infestation of lice. Additionally, the poor food combined with bad water, and the camping sites where tens of thousands bivouacked before, and thus contaminated the water and area with feces, made intestinal ailments such as diarrhoea and dysentery common. By the time Napoleon had reached Moscow three months later, over 200,000 of his soldiers were dead or hospitalised due to disease and exhaustion. Russian troops pushed Napoleon and what was left of his troops back to France. Number 3. The Titanic Titanic is perhaps the most iconic ship in history. Its tragic story is known all over the world. Its maiden voyage ended in tragedy when it struck an iceberg and sank, killing more than 1,500 passengers and crew. Arguably, the foolish decision made by the captain at the time, Captain Smith, led to the crashing of the Titanic. Captain Smith ignored seven iceberg warnings from his crew and other ships prior to the crash. However, is this individual entirely to blame? You could say it was the shipbuilder's fault for the quality of the iron. Or Bruce Ismay's fault for pressuring the captain to maintain the speed of the ship, as the White Star Line wanted to show that they could make a six-day crossing. Maybe it was Thomas Andrews' fault for not getting the architecture of the ship correctly, as he did not make the watertight compartments as high as they should have been. Or it was the Captain Lord's fault for ignoring the Titanic's distress messages. We'll leave this one up to you to decide. Number 2. Hitler invading Russia Nazi Germany vs Communist Russia It was the largest military invasion of World War II, and became the first major land defeat for Hitler. You could definitely say that all of Hitler's decisions were foolish, but what was notable about his invasion of Russia was the fact that in 1941 he broke the non-aggression pact signed in 1939 by Germany and the Soviet Union, when he invaded Russia with an army of more than 3 million men, 7,000 artillery pieces, 3,000 tanks and 2,500 aircraft. Operation Barbarossa proved to be a fatal mistake for Nazi Germany. After months of campaigning, the German army was exhausted. Having expected a rapid Soviet collapse, German planners had failed to equip their troops for winter warfare, which, as we all know, you should never invade Russia in the winter. Expecting their military personnel to live off the land of the conquered Soviet Union at the expense of the indigenous population, which in German calculations would starve to death in the millions. German planners had failed to provide sufficient food and medications. On December 6th, 1941, the Soviet Union launched a major counterattack against the center of the front, driving the Germans back from Moscow in chaos. Number 1. Prohibition 
In 1917, after the United States entered World War I, President Woodrow Wilson instituted a temporary wartime prohibition in order to save grain from producing food. That same year, Congress submitted the 18th Amendment, which banned the manufacture, transportation, and sale of intoxicating liquors for state ratification. It was promoted by the Dry Crusaders, a movement led by rural Protestants and progressives in the Democratic and Republican parties, and was coordinated by the Anti-Saloon League and the Women's Christian Temperance Union. Prohibition was considered the noble experiment. It was supposed to lower crime levels and reduce the amount of money spent on prisons. It was supposed to clean us up socially, as well as improve our health and hygiene. However, what resulted instead was an explosion in alcohol-related crime, and eventually a corrupt law enforcement and political system willing to take bribes or look the other way. When FDR became the 32nd President of the United States, he immediately called for an end of prohibition, and in February 1933, Congress adopted a resolution proposing a 21st Amendment to the Constitution, which would repeal the 18th. 